Hey guys, my name is Anthony Fontana. I'm a CPA with EA Tax Resolutions, and today I'm gonna to be going over the reason why most IRS offering compromises get rejected. I'm gonna be going over the exact lines on the IRS Form 433A OIC, where this happens, so hopefully you don't make the same mistake and we can help you get your offer accepted. All right, so I'm gonna preface this video with the type of IRS offer and compromise we are talking about is the doubt as to collectability offer. All right, so without further ado, the reason why most IRS offer and compromises get rejected is because people don't understand how the IRS household living expenses work. There are standard expenses, there are actual expenses that you're paying out of your bank, and the amount that we get to claim all depends on the type of expense. So let's take a look at the form and see which expense we can use which. All right, so here's that 433A. This is section seven, right? Income and expenses. And this is what we're gonna be discussing here today, the uh, expenses. So if you take a look, right? We start with the food, clothing, miscellaneous. On here, this is our cheat sheet, right? I kind of fill this out. These are all the answers to uh, that question at the beginning is how much can we deduct or how much can we expense? If you wanna take a screenshot, this is uh, a cheat sheet for the 433A here. Um, now, if you see here in blue, this is the IRS's website where it tells you what these standards are, okay? And this is what the website looks like, right? Collection Financial Standards. If you, right there it is, there's that IR, uh, URL. Um, right, so food, clothing, we take the national standard. It depends upon how many people are in the house, right, what we get. And if you have more than four, right, you get to add an additional 341. So that's what you're gonna put right here on line 39. Housing utilities, we take the lesser of the actual that you pay a month or the standard. So if, well, let's take a look. So if we click on, there it is, housing utilities. It depends upon where you live. So if we're here in California, it depends upon how many people are in the household, right? Depends which column we're gonna use. If you have more than six, you have to use the five here, okay? Um, so if we're in LA, all right, 2367 for one person. So let's say you pay $2,000 a month. You would put like four housing and utilities. All the utilities are actually listed right here. Okay, so you kind of go through that. Um, you would have to use the 2000 because the standard is 2300. The lesser of 2000 or 2300 is the 2000. And that's what you're going to put here. Now, if you pay more than the standard, you have to take the standard. Okay, um, if you pay more, it's kind of complicated to to justify the fact that you have to pay more than the standard and it's a little tough. So to make things easy, you just put the, put the standard there. Uh, vehicle loan or lease payment, again, the lesser of the amount that you actually pay out of your bank account um, or the standard that the IRS gives us here on this website. So if we take a look, this is in transportation, there it is, ownership costs, there it is, ownership, so there it is. So depends upon how many cars we have. If you're single, you only get to have one car. Married, we get up to two cars. Again, it's the less of the amount that you actually pay or the standard, okay? So if we pay 600 bucks a month, we have to use that 533. But if you pay 300 bucks a month, you have to use the 300. Okay, that's how that one's gonna work. Vehicle operating costs, this is easy. We just take the standard. We go here, operating costs, depends upon where you live, how many cars you have. So again, if we're in LA, we get the 313. Here's a pro tip. If your car's over eight years old, if it has, or if it has over 100,000 miles, you can get an additional $200 for operating costs on top of whatever we get here for the standard. Uh, you can find that in the IRM, uh, the Internal Revenue Manual. I'll include that in the description where you can find that just in case you ever get kickback for this. But that's a pro tip that we definitely always utilize. Uh, so there's that. Public transportation. So you're either getting your car or public transportation. You're not getting car and public. It just makes no sense. But if you don't have a car, you can use the public transportation. Again, it's the standard. You'll see that again over here, right there, 217. Okay. Uh, health insurance premium, you have to um, actually make the payment. So how much you actually pay. Out-of-pocket healthcare costs. It's either the higher of your actual payment or the standard. So let's take a look on the standards for out-of-pocket, right, right here. 
Depends upon how old we are, but if we're under 65, you get $68 per person on the return. Now, if for some reason, let's say, uh, you pay $300 a month in prescriptions out of pocket, uh, your wife doesn't have any expenses out of pocket or your kids don't have any, everyone else can take this uh, $68 and if you're paying 300, you can get the 300. So you'd add all those up and throw that here on this line. Uh, let's see, court ordered payment, right? Monthly annual alimony, child support, you would have to put the amount that you actually pay. Uh, child dependent care payment, it's gotta be necessary, but it's the actual amount that you pay. So what that means is like, if there's a two parent household and both parents work and we have the kids in daycare, okay, then we get to actually deduct the amount of daycare that we're, uh, we're paying. But if we have a two parent household and one of, only one of the parents works and you're paying childcare, the IRS is not gonna accept it because they say that's not necessary, only one of the parents works, why doesn't the other parent watch the kids? So they wouldn't take that. Life insurance premium, the actual amount you pay, it's gotta be reasonable. Um, I guess that's super subjective, but nonetheless, that's what that is. Current monthly taxes, the actual amount that you're paying, that's Fed, state, FICA tax, like Social Security, Medicare tax, um, those can all go right there. Uh, again, monthly secured debts, Right, you can take a look here. The most uh, common ones that student loans, we put the actual amount that you pay there. I mean, here's a funky one. Let's say you also owe the state some back taxes and you're on like an installment agreement with them. You can use a portion of that installment agreement as a deduction here. But the thing is you don't get to use the full amount. Uh, well, it depends on how you set that up. Generally speaking, we use a percentage of the amount that you're paying and the percentage is based on the state debt over the Fed debt. So like, let's say you owe the state $1,000, you owe the Fed 10,000, so it's like 10% of your payment in the, for easy numbers, you pay $100 a month, 10% of that 100 bucks we get to deduct here. So 10 bucks would go right here. Um, let's see here. All these, again, just to preface this, what we're talking about actual, these have to be proven on the bank statement. So like we have to show that these are actually coming out of your account. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you. Again, this is kind of like the meat and potatoes of this 4 through 3 a OIC. So long that you get this right, we'll get a very clear picture if you qualify for the offer uh, before we even file this, right? So going through this is, is super important to get this right from the get-go. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you guys are looking for some more help on the IRS offer and compromise, be sure to check out the playlist. Subscribe to the channel if this was helpful. Like the video. Again, if this was helpful, share it with anyone you think this could help out. Thank you so much.